Hello students, I welcome you all to my channel Engineers Academy. Do hit the subscribe button if you haven't done it yet. Now we are going to solve this problem which says that determine the reactions at the supports. So here at A we have the roller support and at B we have the pin joint. So we have to find the support reactions. But as we can see that uh, this roller support is resting on an, an inclined surface. So here we have an inclined surface and the inclination of this incline is given in the shape of this right angle triangle. So let's say that uh, this incline is making, uh, let me draw that inclined surface here. Let's say this is that inclined surface and it is making some angle theta with the horizontal. Let's say this is that angle theta. And it will have, if we consider this triangle, so if, if this is theta, then we have the same theta. So we can say that, um, let me draw that triangle here, which is, so this is five, three and four. So we have that same angle theta here. Now the, the roller support is going to be perpendicular with the inclined surface. So we will have that, uh, R A reaction let's say this is R A so if 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 we look into this R A it is going to be perpendicular with this inclined surface is going to make 90 degree with the inclined surface and if I draw a vertical line here so this vertical line is going to be perpendicular with this horizontal line it is going to be 90 degree with this so this RA is perpendicular with the inclined surface and this vertical line is uh, perpendicular with the horizontal. So if the angle between the incline and the horizontal is theta, then the angle between RA and the vertical line is theta as well. So this means that RA is making that same angle theta which is here, which the incline is making. So we can say that this is that angle theta. So now we can resolve this RA into its components. So we will have two components of RA. We will have one component of RA like this. So this one will be RA cos of theta and we will have one other component like this. This one will be RA sine of theta. This is sine of theta. And now from this triangle, we can find cos of theta and sine of theta. So cos of theta is, let me write that, cos of theta. So cos of theta is base divided by hypotenuse. So this is four divided by five. And similarly, sine of theta is perpendicular divided by hypotenuse. So the perpendicular is three and the hypotenuse is five. So this is three divided by five. So now our A cos of theta is, you know, since cos of theta is 4 divided by 5, so we can say that this is 4 divided by 5 R A. And this sine component is, since sine of theta is 3 divided by 5, so this is 3 divided by 5 R A. So now the horizontal reaction at A is 3 divided by 5 R A and the vertical reaction at A is 4 divided by 5 R A. So now let's uh draw the free body diagram so this is the beam and here we have that point a so here at point a we will have uh, the horizontal component of r a that is this is 3 divided by 5 r a and here we will have uh, the vertical component this is uh, 4 divided by 5 r a and at b since we have the pin joint so at b we will have the vertical reaction let's say this is b y and here we will have b x and let's assume that this is our positive x and positive y direction now as we can see that uh, here the external force or the external load is distributed force and and the distributed force is in the form of two triangles two right angle triangles so the resultant of uh, this distributed load will be equal to the area of this triangle since this height is 400 newton per meter so what will be the area of this right angle triangle so the area will be 1 divided by 2 the base is 3 times the height this is 400 so now let's say this is this is area 1 so the the resultant of area one is let me write that this is um, 
R1, which will be equal to 1 divided by 2. The base is 3 and the height is, and the base is 3, this is in, 3 is in meters, remember, this is 3 in meter and the height is 400 newton per meter. So, meter will cancel out and we will have, uh, so 400 divided by 2 is 200 and 200 into 3 is 600, so this is 600 newton. So, the resultant of this triangular load distribution is 600 Newton. And once we find the resultant, we have to find the location of this 600 Newton resultant along this beam. So, now we know that the resultant of uh, this distributed load is 600 Newton, and this 600 Newton force must pass through the uh, centroid of this triangular region or this triangular area. So now the centroid of this triangle is located at uh, two-third of its base. And this is the base, so two-third of three. So if, if this 600 Newton is acting somewhere here, let's say, this is that R1, which is 600 Newton, which is the resultant of this uh, right angle triangle. So it must be acting at a distance of This distance is two-third of this base, which is three meters. So two-third of three. So two-third of three is two meters. Two divided by three into three is two meters. So this means that this 600 uh, Newton resultant of this triangular load distribution will be acting at a distance of two meters from this point A. Let me represent this point A. This is here we have that point A and here we have that point B. Similarly, the resultant of the other triangle, this triangle will be the same since uh, we have both similar triangles on both sides. So we can say that there are two resultant that is again 1 divided by 2 into 3 meters. The base is 3 again and this is 400 Newton per meter. This will give us 600 Newton. And now the resultant of this will be acting somewhere here and the distance of this uh, resultant will be at a distance of two third of this base from this apex, remember. So this is, this is 600 Newton and that 600 Newton is going to act somewhere here, let's say. This is that 600 and from this point of a triangle this distance is two third of the base. So again, this is two. This is two meters. So the total length of the beam is the total length of the beam is six meters. And this is this is two, and this is two. So six minus two minus two. So that will give us two. So this means that this distance between 600 and 600 Newton force is 2 meters as well. This is 2 and this is 2. So now we have to find this the reactions. This uh, are A and Bx and By. So now if we apply the summation of uh, the moment about point B equals to 0, the summation of the moment since the beam is in equilibrium, so the summation of moment about point B will be equal to zero and the counterclockwise moment is considered to be positive. So now as we can see that uh, this component of uh, the reaction is passing to that point B, it's not going to produce the moment about point B. So this component, this reaction, BY and BX, they are not going to produce the moment about point B since they are passing to that point B. So this are A, this 600 and this 600, they are producing the moment. So now this RA is producing the clockwise moment. So I will write minus 4 divided by 5 RA. And the perpendicular distance or the moment arm of this component from that point B is 6 meters. So I will multiply it with 6. Similarly, this 600 Newton force is producing the counterclockwise moment. So we will write plus 600 and the perpendicular distance of this 600 Newton force from that point B is 4 meters. This is 4. So we will multiply this with 4. Similarly, this 600 Newton force is producing the counterclockwise moment. So I will write plus 
600 and the moment arm of this 600 newton force from that point v is 2 meters so we will multiply it with 2 and this is equal to 0 so now from this we can write that minus 4 divided by 5 r a into 6 is equal to minus 600 into 4 plus 600 into 2 so Th this will this will also become minus right on the right hand side this is minus 600 into 4 minus 600 into 2 so minus 600 into 4 minus 600 into 2 this gives us minus 3600 this is equal to and from this we can say that our a is equal to, minus sign will cancel out so we can write that our a is 3600 into 5 divided by 4 and then we have to divide by 6 so we have to cross multiply this so that will be 5 divided by 4 and then we have to divide it by 6 so this is 3600 uh, 3600 multiplied by 5 divided by 6 into 4 so this gives us our a equals to 750 so our a is equal to 750 Newton this is our a Similarly if we apply the summation of forces along x that will be equals to 0 as well. So the summation of forces And this is our positive x direction towards the right now as we can see that this is a uh, 3 divided by 5 or 8 is acting in the positive x so Plus 3 divided by 5 RA. RA is known which is 750 minus BX. BX is acting in the negative X. This BX is acting in the negative X. And there is no other force in the horizontal direction. So this will be equals to 0. And from this we can say that BX is equal to 3 divided by 5 into 750. So 3 divided by 5. 3 into 750 divided by 5 this gives us 450 so bx is 450 newtons similarly if we apply the summation of forces along y so the summation of forces along y that must be equals to 0 as well this is our positive y direction so now we have this uh, by in the upward direction that is plus by then we have uh, this component in the positive y that is 4 divided by 5 r a so plus 4 divided by 5 r a is 750 and then we have this 600 in the negative y and this 600 in the negative y so this is 1200 in the negative y so we will write minus 1200 this is equal to zero now b y equals to 1200 minus 4 divided by 5 into 750 so this is 1200 minus uh, 4 into 750 divided by 5 this gives me 600 so by is equal to 600 newton so the horizontal direction at b is 450 the vertical direction at b is 600 newton and the reaction at a is 750 which is making that angle theta which is given in the shape of this triangle so this is the solution of this particular problem i hope it will help you in your learning do let me know in the comments if it helps in your learning like this video and subscribe my channel for the solution of such more problems related to hibbler statics